In today's video, we're gonna see what is this thing called MERN or MERN stack. We're gonna demystify each of these technologies one by one and understand why is MERN stack so famous and used by so many companies and has such a huge demand. So as far as full form goes, MERN means MongoDB, Express.js, React.js and Node.js. Now what are all these technologies? Let's go on each of these one by one. So here's what a basic flow of a MERN stack application looks like. In our front end, we use React.js. For our back end, we use Node.js as our web server and Express.js as our web framework. And for our database, we use MongoDB where all of our application's data is going to be stored. Now let's first move on towards React.js and understand what React.js is all about. So React.js is a front-end library built and maintained by Facebook. It has the feature of reusable component. Now what do I mean by reusable component? Let's find out. So here's the screenshot of Instagram. So Instagram, if you don't know, is also made by using React. So as you can see here, we have got tons of stories. So what do you think? When we need to render all of these stories on our web page, does someone create each and every one of them separately? No, obviously not. We create one of them and then reuse that component again and again and again. So this is what reusable component is all about. React.js makes it too easy to make components like this. So for example, if we see over here suggested for you column, we have created this one component and then we are rendering it again and again and again and again. So this is what reusable component is all about. So our next point is that it provides us with virtual DOM. Now what is virtual DOM? Now you might have heard about DOM before. JavaScript is used to manipulate our DOM if we want to change anything in our HTML file. So React.js provides us with this virtual DOM. Let's search what this virtual DOM is all about. Let's go on over here and search virtual DOM. And we have got React documentations. So the virtual DOM is a programming concept where an ideal or virtual representation of a UI is kept in memory and synced with real DOM. So what do you mean by that? So let's see over here. When I click on this tutorial button, what do you think will happen? Let's see. Did you notice that? The page did not refresh. This was because of the virtual DOM. Let me click it again. And the page did not refresh. It got changed in a blink of an eye. So this is what virtual DOM does. It keeps the UI components already pre-rendered in our memory. So it helps React make the website super fast. And hence our fourth point, it is super fast. Let's move on to our next technology, Node.js. Node.js is JavaScript runtime built on Chrome's V8 engine. It's basically a scalable web server. So what is the web server? Web server plays a role of managing our APIs, connecting our front end with our database. Basically it is the heart and brain of our application. So Node.js provides us with something called Node Package Manager. Let's see what Node Package Manager is. So I'm going to go to browser again and search npm or Node Package Manager. So here we are, npmjs.com. So what npm is, it contains all of the packages that are built with help of Node or JavaScript. So let's go on over here and search a package called Express. So Express is a web framework that we already mentioned. So as you can see, Express is hosted in NPM's repository. And we can see the documentation as well and how you can install it and etc, etc. So this is the power of Node.js. It provides us with this huge library of packages called NPM or Node Package Manager. And we can use it to develop real-time systems such as a chat application. It works super fast. Let's move on to our next technology stack that is Express.js. We already saw what Express is. It's a Node.js framework. That's why it is hosted on NPM. So Express.js helps us to build powerful routing APIs. Now what is API? 
we will understand in just a moment. So basically the API means application programming interface. Whenever front end requests something from the back end, API plays a role of carrying that information from back end to the front end. So the third point being that Express.js has a really, really good documentation. Let's go and have a look at the Express.js documentation. So I'm gonna go to Google and search Express.js. Let's go to its website and let's go to guide. And here you can see we have got this beautiful looking documentation. I mean, it's not so for example, if you want to create an API, we just want to do a get request and then pass a function. I know you won't be able to understand all of this right now. So don't worry. In, so in our next video, we are going to create our first web server and we are going to use all the power of Express.js in that video. So you can go through this documentation if you want. It's really, really helpful. Fourth point being is that it provides a super high performance. It's super scalable. Doesn't matter if your website has thousands of people or lakhs of people visiting Express.js will not break. And it has many third party plugins as well. Now let's move on to our last technology that is MongoDB. So MongoDB is a cross platform, no SQL and document oriented database. What do you mean by no SQL? You might have heard of SQL databases such as MySQL, PostgreSQL. So it's completely opposite from that. SQL databases doesn't provide us that good of a performance, but MongoDB is super fast and super scalable. We're gonna see the difference between NoSQL and SQL in just a moment. So this is a very important feature of MongoDB is that it's always on. It's not hosted on your let's say on your server because it has a completely different website called mongodb.com so it's always on it's always 24 7 maintained so it's a really good feature of mongodb and as i already mentioned it's highly scalable it won't break so one of the difference between sql and no sql is that in sql we create tables so we have fixed row and columns but that is not the case in no sql in NoSQL, we have document oriented database. So it goes on to scales. doesn't matter how many information you throw into it. It's going to scale according to that. And the fourth point is flexible schema. We can define schema for our data very easily. Let's go on to Chrome again, and I'm going to search SQL versus, uh, versus NoSQL. Let's go over here. And here we can see differences between SQL and no SQL. So first and the major difference being that I told you already, SQL has tables with fixed rows and columns and no SQL has document based. So it contains JSON documents in key value pairs. So it was SQL was developed in 1970s, but the no SQL was developed in late 2000s. So it's really advanced in nature. So I would encourage you to go on to read more about this. You're going to learn a lot of things if you do. So here were our four technologies. Now let's see how these four technologies work and coordinate with each other. So here's what a basic Mernstack stack data flow looks like. So let's take an example for our chat application. Here's our react app in the front end. What it's going to do, it's going to send a request to our web framework that is Express.js. It's going to send this request to fetch all of the chats from the backend from our database. So Express.js takes that request, interprets it and sends it to our web server. Now our web servers uses something called mongoose in the backend to connect to our MongoDB database. It establishes a connection with the MongoDB database and makes a query to our MongoDB database to get all of the chats from there. Now then MongoDB compiles that query and sends back the data to the web server, which is then sent to our web framework and is sent to our front end in form of a JSON data, our chats JSON data, and then our front end that is our React.js app displays all the JSON data. Now you might be wondering what is this get over here. Now there are four types of request, get, post, put, and delete. Now get is used when we want to get something from the backend and not send something to the backend, right? So in this case, we are getting all of our chats from this API endpoint. And then there's a post request where we can send something to our backend. For example, if you want to create a new chat, 
then we can hit this endpoint and we can create a new chat with all of the data such as name of the chat, all of the users involved, etc. Then there is this put request. As you can see, there is one ID over here. So put request is usually used for updating something. So we are providing this ID. So take this ID and search in the database and update that particular chat. For example, if you want to update the name of the chat, so we're gonna send a put request and update the name of the chat. And the fourth one is delete, that is self-explanatory. This is used for deleting a particular chat or anything in our database. So these are four types of request, get, post, put, and delete. And this was a basic flow of a Mern stack application. Now in our next video, we're gonna go ahead and set up whole of our environment that will be used for developing a Mern stack app. And then we're gonna go on to create our very first web server. So click the link in the description to access the whole of the playlist because this playlist is going to be absolutely awesome. Also, if you like this video, click the like button and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.